Hello, welcome back. So far, uh, you have learned XPath and how to create an XPath. And, and essentially, we learn how to make a generic way to create an XPath. Okay, so here in this video, we will learn uh, one more trick. Okay, in this HTML page, okay, which is example 5.html, and this, this page will be available in our website. So what I want to do is take this example5.html and try to find out a XPath that will identify this element and that will identify this button. Let's uh, take a look how we will do that. Okay, so this is uh, that that example5.html. Okay, in example5.html, my goal is to locate this element and this element. Okay, so let's first try to locate the submit element, submit button. So the first first step, let's do inspect element using Firebug. Second step, let's copy this HTML and bring this HTML to the uh, and then and then bring that HTML to this uh, Notepad. Okay, so our HTML is looking like something like this. Okay, okay. So this is how my HTML is going to look like. Okay, so what is my element name? My element name is input. Okay, so my element name is input. So therefore, I do two slash. Then I do input. Then what I do? I create this bracket. Then I I choose any identifiers. Okay, so basically this is one attribute, this is another attribute, this is another attribute, this is another attribute, and so on. I can choose any attribute. So let's choose this attribute, which is id submit is equal submit underscore one zero three two. So if I want to write using this thing, then what I do, I, what I'll do, I'll do at a rate. And what is attribute name? The attribute name is id. Then what is attribute value? The attribute value is submit underscore one zero three through okay so let's try to do uh, so so this is probably this XPath is going to help us okay so let's open our IDE and I want to do XPath is equal to so XPath equals slash slash input okay and then I give a bracket end the bracket and inside that what is I want to give iterate ID iterate ID equals submit 1034 submit underscore 1032 okay and I need to do a code okay because that's what they, they require in XPath I will put a code and then let's try to find yes I'm finding this thing no problem okay so let's what I do I just want to uh, refresh this thing okay so after refreshing this thing let's try to find so it looks like it's not able to find anymore so what happened so let's check like you know so it's supposed to find this thing right and then go back and then do inspect element with firebug so it looks like the submit 1032 has been changed to submit underscore 160 okay so this happens this happens in dynamic web pages where your id value might change what should you do so that it will always recognize and that is where your XPath function comes into play. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this thing in a different way. And that thing is slash slash input. Then I'm going to use a function here. And that function is called starts with. Starts with. What the starts will function will take? Take two parameters. One parameter is the attribute name, which is iterate ID. Then the other parameter in a code is just give the submit that means it does not care what is this value 1032 if tomorrow this is 1000 this is going to work because we are matching if the id contains submit see like you know you can always always uh, argue that we can we can have done something like id is equal to submit underscore 1032 but using id is equal to submit 1032 you cannot handle this kind of scenario even if there's an id available you cannot handle this kind of scenario because the moment you refresh the page something else is going to come so that is where you have to use xpath and xpath does have this kind of functions okay that will help you okay so let's now try to uh, see if this thing works 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a function here and that function is starts hyphen with then I will do this thing and I don't really need an equal here I will put a color as a I put a comma there and then what I'm going to do I'm going to remove this thing I don't need one zero three two okay with this let's see if it's working okay so basically the mistake that I did I didn't give a bracket here so it's very uh, careful submit so with this again it started to work so if you put see you, you are able to recognize this thing now let's do this uh, the same thing for the next next element I also want to want to to locate this element as well and uh, let's take a look what is the inspect with element with firebug uh, let's say I do copy HTML so this is the HTML that I'm getting and what happened here is a little bit, little bit different here instead of you know like you know, in, in the previous case we are we are having some kind of field like submit underscore some dynamic value but here some dynamic value underscore some static value so what do you do we can do the same thing with another function called contents okay so therefore let's try to rewrite this expert so we have slash slash because you know this dot the element is input so therefore input then we start two brackets then first bracket will be then we use this function called contents okay contents then what do we iterate what we have we have id 7834 so iterate id comma count okay that's all so if you do this thing then this is again going to you know even if you refresh this thing whatever number you are going to get but still okay so this will find that location okay so let's do this so so basically I want to do one more thing so this is I will delete I want to use contents right contents then what I'm going to do ID count okay that, that's all you need to change so look at this you can able to get that thing okay so this is how you're going to handle the dynamic value so look like you know if you are if you are overly dependent on tools like firepath then this is again is going to fail you so let's say for example if I'm if I'm looking at the firepath firepath is suggesting me that ID 783 count this is wrong because if I use this thing it's going to fail because this is dynamic okay so that's what I'm saying you know that is the reason like you know it's not always you have to use the firepath but you can use the firepath tool and then see like you know if this thing is really working fine or not okay and this is how this is why I want to explain to you this dynamic content in this in this video